After five range trips with the CRS rifle scopes mounted to four different rifles, I can answer the questions that most hunters will have about these scopes. Can you rely on its optical tracking and build dependability? Will it hold zero? And can you accurately hold over it if needed? Can you see the reticle in low light? Hi, I'm Tina from Target Tamers, and in this video review, I will answer those questions and more. I will cover both the CRS-1 and the CRS-2 scopes, comparing their shared features, my experiences with each scope in the field, and how they differ from one another. So to get started, how did the Sierra series come about? Maven states that the motivation behind the completely new line of rifle scopes was by consumer request and demand. It has the same optical quality as the award-winning mid-range C-series binoculars and it meets reasonable price points that many can consider affordable. And Maven did all of this without compromising in materials or manufacturing quality. So instead of compromising in quality, um, the added bells and whistles that you would usually see with high-end rifle scopes were dumped in favor for a very straightforward set it and forget it hunting rifle scope. So the CRS scopes do not have FFP reticles, illumination, a zero stop. With that said, then who is the CRS series for? Hunters, features like illumination, glass etched FFP reticles, zero stops, exposed turrets, fatter tubes, etc. These are add-ons that not all hunters use, nor want, nor want to pay more for, let alone hauling the extra weight that comes with such added features. What some hunters really want is just optical tracking and build dependability. So will, can you see your reticle in low light and your target in various terrains? Will it hold zero? Can you accurately hold over if needed? To answer those questions, yes. Yes, yes, and yes. Getting into more detail, CRS stands for Classic Rifle Scope Series. Now let's go over their shared features. Glass quality. The CRS rifle scopes have the same optical quality as the C-series binoculars. Very clear and very crisp. There was almost no discernible chromatic aberration. Uh, tack sharp edge to edge sharpness uh, with maybe a tiny bit of field curvature on the very outer say last five percent of the field of view excellent sight picture for hunting um, it also had great resolution for low light shooting i did this at the range its light transmission rate is 88 percent and its perceivable brightness will be very similar to that of maven's rs1 now they have uh, adjustable diopters both of them do with plus and minus two corrections i'm far-sighted and I was able to compensate for my vision with both scopes. Build quality, I'm guessing it's made from aluminum. It feels like it, it's super lightweight. There's a lot of smooth surfaces on these scopes. Um, it lacks the aggressive knurling that we've seen on the RS series, but because of that raised indicator fin on the powering, it makes it super easy even with gloves on to use and manipulate that magnification. Now the CRS series of scopes are made in Japan. They're waterproof to a depth of three meters and they've been nitrogen purged for that internal fog proof protection. The CSHR reticle. Now CSHR stands for Classic Simple Hold Reticle, I think, and it was custom designed specifically for the CRS series based off the RS scope reticles. Now to keep in line with cost conscious decisions, uh, the reticle is made from wire. Yes, wire reticles still exist. Now the benefits of wire is that it's extremely visible in various conditions, especially in say low light and in the timber, even though it doesn't have illumination. Those wire crosshairs are very bold. They draw your eyes straight to the center and will work well for the eastern and the western hunter. The reticle is located in the second focal plane, meaning that it does not change size as you manipulate magnification. It also means that you can only accurately use those holdovers at max magnification. The holdover values are 5, 10, and 20 MOA at 12 times and 16 times respectively. Seeing as that the reticles are not calibrated for a specific cartridge, you should use the ballistic app and confirm at the range what your values will be. I think the idea behind the BDC reticle is to provide more versatility for hunters who are taking shots over 200 yards regularly and who are not dialing in. But for other hunters who are taking shots inside 100 yards, let alone 200 yards, the simple and uncluttered design of the CSHI reticle is not too far off from the duplex. While there is always an argument to improve or further complicate the CSHI reticle, I think it fits the overall constitution of the CRS rifle scopes. Turrets and adjustments. The turrets can be accused of being simple and many will question its value because they come capped, like a zero stop, have limited adjustment range because they sit on a one inch tube. Well, let me tell you something, not everyone is dialing in and many of us will choose to get closer to our prey. The caps have value because they give us the surety that no unintentional adjustments are being made. They're not outdated at all because they don't require tools to make the adjustments. They're finger adjustable. 
and while the caps while the clicks are not the loudest I've heard before you can feel them even with gloves on zero reset now both scopes have these it's more of a modern feature it's not listed in the manual but I did take out the two screws and re-index my zero and then put the screws back now for whatever reason if I'm dialing more and I want to be able to know that I'm coming back to my zero since it doesn't have a zero stop I would take a fine permanent marker and just mark under the turret where my zero is to mark the revolution that I'm on now packaging and accessories it comes with a microfiber lens cleaning cloth a maven labeled scope cover and a instructional pamphlet now the packaging it comes with a box outer sleeve and inside this box comes the scope and as you can see it fits really well inside with the foam inserts the bundle package now the bundle package includes worn maxima one inch medium height rings they're horizontal split and i tell you they're so much easier to use to mount uh, than vertical split rings these are like 50 to 70 dollar rings very high quality and they fit perfect with bolt action hunting rifles as you'll see later in this review they fit to pick any rails did i mention that now with that under our belts, let's go ahead to pick apart the CRS-1 scope. Now specs, the CRS-1 has a 40mm objective lens size, a 41mm eyepiece, it has a total of 50 MOA in uh, elevation and windage adjustment, it has eye relief of 3.2 to 2 inches, and a field of view of 34 to 8.5 feet at 100 yards. Surprisingly, it's longer than the CRS-2 at 12.44 inches, but it comes in lighter at, I want to say, 14.2 ounces. The CRS-1 has 4 times zoom, so 3 to 12 times magnification, that is quickly overshadowing the one standard three to nine times configuration. With that little bit of power, you might be able to see better, but it's not out of the realm of being practical for holding over at max three times power. I didn't notice any tunneling. The magnification ring works smoothly with good resistance and the focus holds well since it's been factory fixed for parallax at 100 yards. I'd say the CRS-1 will do great for the timber, the stand, eastern hunters, on rim fires, on bolt action hunting rifles, and on the AI MSR platform. So basically everything. Now I mounted the CRS-1 to a Ruger 1022, a, an AR-15 shooting 223, and a Smith & Wesson iBolt 270. It looked really cool on the Ruger 1022, and even though my 22 LR impacts were all over the place, it was really fun to plink with and hit steel with. While I was at the range, I brought my mounting gear to move the CRS-1 to the AR. And the most important thing to note was that I needed high rings, and that's because the objective bow wouldn't clear the rail, because my rail runs longer than the scope. So with high rings and mounted forward so that the charging handle was clear, I was golden. I adjusted the stock, found perfect eye relief, and had no issues with staying within the eye box. I would not second guess putting the CRS-1 on an AR MSR style rifle again. Lastly, the CRS-1 went onto my favorite hunting rifle of all time, my 270, and it fit on there perfectly with the included rings. Even though it has a bigger kick than any of the other rifles that went on, I was still able to achieve great eye relief and stay within that eye box and had no issues at all. Now for the dislike, not that I think you can call it a dislike or, or a disadvantage because I found nothing wrong with the CRS-1, so I'm going to be hypercritical here. The clarity at 25 yards was a bit on the soft side and that's because it's factory set for focus at 100 yards. So when I moved out to 50 yards and 100 and beyond, it was tack sharp, just a little bit on the soft side at 25. Now the CRS-2 specs, it has a 44mm objective lens, an approximate 39mm eyepiece lens, a total of 36 MOA in windage and elevation adjustment travel, and it has eye relief of somewhere between 3.4 to 2.4 inches, field of view of 25.6 to 6.4 feet at 100 yards, and it's like 11.6 inches long and weighs 16.9 ounces. Now the CRS-2 has 4 times zoom, so magnification of 4 to 16 times, which I think is a good all-purpose configuration for long-range hunting, when long-range hunting means longer than 300-400 yards. Now the magnification ring I notice is a little bit on the uh, stiffer side than the CRS-1, but presented no issues in the field, and especially using it with gloves on. Now the CRS-2 has a side focus for parallax correction and for focusing and I'm a big time side focus girl versus the adjustable objective. Now it has markings from 25 yards to infinity starting with 25, 30, 40, 50, 60, 75, 100 and then 150, 200, 300, 500 then an infinity sign. Now it's very easy to use. I tend to focus for my eye versus what I see for the markings. Really super easy to see with your left eye without ever moving your sights while you're looking through the scope. 
the higher power of the CRS2 will do well in big open country out west and even in high mountain desert. The extra power will help with small game hunting and um, to spot groupings at the range. I spent more time at the range testing the CRS2 than I did the CRS1 and that's mostly because I went out to 200 yards with the CRS2 and the winds were ridiculous. The CRS2 went on an AF15 shooting in 223 and a Winchester Model 70 further away in 30 yard 6. The scope mounted beautifully to my Winchester Model 70 with the included rings. I zeroed it in 100 yards and dialed for wind at 200 yards versus doing a Kentucky windage. I used a ballistic app that Maven recommends, the Strelock Pro. It costs like $12, but they have the CH CSHR reticles in their system and I was able to put in my ballistic info, you know, the weather conditions and then create my profile. These are my distances for the holdovers with the 100 yard zero and 27 mile per hour winds and then holdovers with a 200 yard zero. On the Winchester I was confident in getting eye relief to avoid scope bite but I did catch myself crawling the stock to stay within the eye box. Now mounting to the AR it's a similar story as mounting the CRS1 to the AR. The objective bell did not clear the rail. I think what be, would be more appropriate for my setup would be super high rings but I used the high rings that I had and I only barely cleared the rail like paper thin clearance three millimeters maybe and I you know mounted it a little bit forward to clear the charging handle adjusted my stock and I had perfect eye relief and was able to stay in that eye box the only dislike is that the eye box is a little tight to stay inside at 16 times power uh, but with the right rifle and with consistent positions this shouldn't be an issue case in point I had no issues with eye relief and uh, the eye box on my AR-15 so this is more of a subjective critique because I only had this negative experience with the Winchester Model 70 and it is a new rifle it was my first time shooting with it if that means anything summing it up I know that the CRS rifle scopes are a perfect and ideal mating with my 270 my favorite hunting rifle anyway. Now, regardless of my groupings and my in-progress sharpshooter abilities, the CRS2, like the CRS1, tracks accurately. Every time I made an adjustment, it moved true in the field. I tried to show tracking with video footage by moving a full revolution and back again in elevation and windage. Even though I had a counterweight on my tripod and the target wasn't on level ground and spring winds are unceasing right now. Now due to the different configurations, they're both going to have different specs such as eye relief, field of view, exit pupil, that kind of thing. So the most obvious difference is the magnification. The CRS-1 has 3 to 12 times magnification while the CRS-2 has 4 to 16 times magnification. Uh, the other notable differences are in size and weight. The CRS-1 is 12.44 inches long and weighs 14.2 ounces while the CRS-2 is 11.61 inches long and weighs 16.93 ounces. The other notable difference is that the CRS2 has a side focus that starts from 25 yards and goes out to infinity, while the CRS1 is fixed for parallax at 100 yards. Now they're both the same in form and function. They both have the same type of optical quality, one inch tube, quarter MOA adjustments with 18 MOA per revolution, and they both have CSHR reticles. After having clocked in more than 12 hours and five trips to the range in the most frustrating windy conditions, I can deem the CRS-1 and the CRS-2 target tamers approved. By the way, my targets need replacing now. In both performance and overall quality, the mid-range series of CRS rifle scopes have value to both the traditional and the modern hunter. It has a minimalistic but practical approach that is further incentivized by its affordability. So for more information, each rifle scope has its own written review. I'll include those links in the description below. Thank you so much for joining in today. As always, like, subscribe, and get outside.